You're listening to Simple Roots Radio, episode number 195, and today we're learning about how to get an Enneagram 8 healthy. Welcome to Simple Roots Radio with Alexa Sherm. Alexa believes that simplicity in life is the key to achieving true and lasting health. And now your host, Alexa Sherm. Welcome back to this podcast. As always, my name's Alexa, and this is the place to get healthy, live happy, and find more joy. I'm so glad you're here. At the end of the Enya Health series, today we're breaking down Enneagram Type 8. Now, I'm so thrilled to be doing this episode because I love Enneagram Type 8s and how they just lay it straight, how they're not afraid to back down and to challenge and to stand up for what they believe in. So today I want to offer maybe a little slight twist um, in the whole concept of health as it relates to an Enneagram Type 8. And my hope and my goal and my mission for this is that really you would just become such a confident eight that you would be so confident with who you are and what you bring to the world that you can actually be soft with yourself and with the people around you because eights, you do have a vulnerable side. So stay tuned as we get into those health tips that I give you as an Enneagram type eight. And I hope it kind of transition your thought pattern because we're not all the same. And we all have a different requirement and nutritional needs. And really, it just boils down to this personal idea or personalized health. So that's what we're going to dig into. If you haven't been following along and this is your first time, welcome. We're so glad you're here. I assume you're an Enneagram 8. If not, uh, kudos to, to you for learning and listening and to understand other people in a more positive light. Um, but if you haven't been listening and you want to understand what is the Enneagram, and why does this matter, make sure you go back and listen to episode number 180, where I redefine or go back to the original definition of what self-care actually means and how to learn what your Enneagram number is. And then just follow along as we've knocked out all the other Enneagram types except type nine, which will be next week. So stay tuned for that again. That's at episode number 180. As always, I have a free handout that goes along with today's show. It gives tips, tricks, hacks, journal prompts, all the things an Enneagram type eight needs to fully live in health. To grab that free handout, head on over to the show notes at simpleroutswellness.com backslash 185. You can actually grab a free handout for every single Enneagram number over there as well. And one last thing before we get started, I just want to remind you that this series, the Enya Health Series, is sponsored by a company I love and hold dear to my heart, that's Juve. You've heard me talk a ton about Juve, even interviewing their co-founder, Melissa Strahan, on episode number 148. But basically, Juve is a red light therapy device company, and the importance of red light is becoming more well-known in all research across all scopes of health and life. So red light gets its benefit from the specific wavelength that acts in the body in various ways. On a cellular level, it has been shown to improve mitochondrial function and increase the production of energy inside the body. This can bring healing, better lymphatic flow, quicker recovery, more vibrant and tighter skin, and so many other things. Combine that with infrared light therapy, which just penetrates at a deeper level of cells, there is an enormous health benefit that can be found with these red light therapy devices. And I'm not just saying that because they're sponsoring the show. I have my own device and I have found such significant benefit. More even energy, better brain functioning, healthier skin, and so much more. I'm gonna be sharing a full post on what that, what Juve has done for me later on. But for now, I want you to make sure you head on over to Juve to learn more about red light therapy. Just head on over there at Juve, that's J-O-O-V-V, dot com backslash simple roots and make sure you enter simple roots at checkout for a special gift with your purchase. Okay, but for now, let's get right back to the Enneagram 8. So the Enneagram 8, it's technically known as the challengers, the protectors, the leaders. These are people who are self-confident, strong, powerful, passionate, assertive, protective, resourceful, straight talking, decisive, like they know what they want and they know how to get it. But also with all of that, type eights, the challenger, protector, leader, they also have a very soft, vulnerable side. And I don't want to say soft because every Enneagram eight just winced at that because you are known for your strength and your toughness, but they do have a tender side to them. This warm, loving, generous side 
especially in health, because an Enneagram type A in health moves more towards an Enneagram 2. However, for the majority of time, that's kind of hidden. But as I mentioned, I feel like my mission with Enneagram Type 8s and what I really want to bring to the table is that you can become so confident in who you are. We're going to talk about how you can do that because you're already like, I'm already confident, right? I don't need that. But I'm talking in a way that you can be so confident that you can also offer yourself the soft side that you can offer the world around you, the soft side of yourself, that you don't always have to put this front of toughness on, but that you can use that to build this confidence so that you can be tender to your own needs. Because that's what's funny about an eight, right? Is that you're so strong and you're so powerful and you're so self-controlled and and all these strong, fierce things that sometimes you can overpower your own self, ignoring and resisting health at all costs. So your basic fear is of being harmed or controlled by others, which in the diet industry, you can see how this can be a huge problem, right? And why many AIDS maybe struggle with the whole concept of health in their life is because health to you seems like another set of rules, another program, or something that's coming to control your life, to restrict you and kind of box you in. And this is so against how an AIDS works, and really it acts against their basic fear of being controlled. So your desire is to protect yourself and to be in control of your own life destiny. Now, I think that this is important because I think this is the key to getting so healthy and so confident that you actually have this soft self-respect for yourself, that you can honestly use that as your motivation to why you want to work out, to why you want to eat, is if you hear nothing more from this, it's simply to be in control of your life destiny. And in order to do that, you have to be healthy, right? That you have to kind of control your health so that health doesn't get away from you. And I think there's that disconnect that we can look at health or AIDS can look at health in the scope of just what they're being told and almost rebel in that in, in some way. Like AIDS are very black and white. They're either overeating or over-exercising or overworking or over whatever it is, fill in the blank. It's very on or off. They're either investing all of their energy or none of their energy. And they forget that there's this, this entire gray scope. So maybe what an eight needs is a little bit more balance in their life. And I think that's a bad word also for an eight because uh, that doesn't seem black or white. But what I'm saying with this is that you start to get your mind outside of this like black and white scope of health is just trying to be controlled upon me and instead maybe twist your focus to how important it is to take back control of yourself, to know yourself enough to know how to care for yourself because that's going to be important in your entire life destiny, right? Like that's important in owning your life and controlling your life and making sure that you have a life to live. (laughs) And I think that point can get easily overlooked with a type eight. Now, you do have such strong gifts and strengths that help you out so much in health. In fact, of all the Enneagram numbers, we often distinguish eight as one of the healthier, like physically healthier body types that there is. Now, I'm going to give you some contradictions to where your health go wrong, but in general, you don't have a lot of guilt around food or any guilt around food. You're super self-confident. And of all the Enneagram types, you have the most energy. Now, where that can go wrong or where we see health problems arise, again, is this very black or white thinking of you're either all in or you're not in. So if you're not in in health, it's probably showing, right? And on top of that, because an Enneagram 8 is a part of the gut triad, which means you experience life through your body, you also hold a lot of tension in your body. Like you hoard emotions through tension inside your body as opposed to letting it go. Now, Enneagram types eights are also very futuristic, um, which means that you like to suppress the past. You don't like to bring up the past. It doesn't seem worthwhile to you. It seems really like a setback. And so rather than dealing with the past, you suppress the past or emotional things that maybe you haven't challenged or you've challenged and it hasn't gone in the direction that you wished, then you start to suppress those things and you do build more and more and more attention. So while you have a lot of energy, 
Sometimes if that energy is bad energy, and I don't mean that in like a woo-woo way, but you're overworking or you're over-exercising or, or you're overdoing things, then that bad energy of overworking that can actually get stored in negative ways. And in that storing, in that tension, that's where we see more health problems come into effect. And that can also lead to more overeating and doing things like that to kind of suppress or numb or cope with these mechanisms of suppression. But like I mentioned, you have so many great gifts and skills that are so valuable. So while your energy is either all in or all out, I really want you to start putting steps towards being more all in towards this concept of health. And to break that down, like I said, I think that there are so many restraints on this concept of health because you don't want to be told what to do. And I think that while this sounds like how is she going to come back from that, right, as a health podcaster, I honestly believe that none of us should be told what to do because it's in our own bodies and knowing our bodies enough to know what to do with it. Like we, I believe that there is no health requirement. It's really just based on what are your body's needs and providing more of that. So I think that this can be a really valuable thing, especially if you take the time to listen to your body, to respect your body, and to love on your body, and to really put some emphasis here. So I'm saying the good news is, is that I want you to walk away from all thoughts about what health has been told to you or taught to you. Because I think there's a sense of rebellion in AIDS of like, no, I'm certainly not going to do that because that is what everyone's doing and it's clearly not working and there's lies embedded in it and all the things that fire all of your warning signals inside your body. So I want you to kind of close off everything you've been taught about the diet industry. And I want you to then go back and I want you to ask simply this straight up question. If your body could talk, what would it tell you? Like go back and listen to not what the world's telling you or what you have to be doing to achieve X, Y, and Z, but just go back and understand, okay, what is my body telling me? Have I been overworking? Have I not been resting enough? Have I not gotten rid of the right amount of energy? Like, am I so busy fixing the world that I haven't actually spent time filling myself back up? So put aside the what you've thought and believed about health, and I want you to come back to, okay, what is it that my body's telling me? Outside of everything I've ever heard about health, what does my body need? And I want you to start focusing on controlling that, on being in control of your own health, because that really is the only way to health. So the good news is you can break free of that old mindset that really does hold you back and you can step into this new idea that you can determine your own course in life and create your own food rules. You can create your own health identity and that's exactly what I want you to do. Now it seems vague because it is kind of vague because everybody is going to look so different. Now what I know about this though is that The same basic principles apply for everyone, right? We know what's right to eat, what's wrong to eat, and it's not a rebellion thing, but it's simply coming back to, okay, how can I fill my body with these nourishing foods? So it's eating wholesome foods, getting enough of the right liquids in your body, taking time for yourself, exercising, moving your body, all of those things, right? You know those are critical and important, but what that specifically looks like is going to be independent of you. So I want you to take some time and in the handout that I give you, I actually help walk you through this process of creating your own health vision. Answering the question, if your body could talk, what would it tell you? And then make a list of health rules that you can establish that will fulfill what your body needs. Basically implementing this vision because you're a visionary, you're very futuristic, and you are strong and well-powered and you will do this, but it has to come from the right mindset. And it's that simple shift of not letting the world control you and rebelling against that, but being in control for yourself. With that, not overlooking your health, which can often happen, again, in this all or nothing mindset that we see. So eight, there are some really healthy things that you can do to help create healthy patterns and rhythms in your life, to be in control of your life. But before we get there, I just want to like kind of lay a foundation for how you should interact with food that you eat. There's a few basic things that eights really love about food. You love bold flavor. You like presentation. Like you like the appeal of food and you will eat strong foods. So I want you to think about that and 
as you're eating foods? Like, can you create a better visual representation with the foods that you eat? Being aware of what you like and what you don't like and creating your own spin on recipes. Again, I think this is going to create more freedom and more willingness to stick with whatever healthy things that you want to implement into your life, whatever healthy things your body is asking for. I think that there has to be some kind of appeal to it. And what I mean by that is often with food for an eight, it's flavor, it's the look of it, um, and it's the sense of like that is a strong presentation. That matters to you. It might sound vain, but it really does matter for you. On the flip side, you also can sometimes struggle with impulse control. Like if we had to label an eight as anything in the food world, it would be impulse control. Like sometimes you are your own worst enemy and you feel strong, lustful cravings that can be hard to control. Given that you don't like outside control, this is going to be important to just make yourself aware of this, aware of when the situation arises, when you feel like you have these lustful cravings, and then come back with a way that you can satisfy that without binging or overeating. A simple thing that you could do or a practical thing is literally to have a food that you turn to when you feel this lustful craving coming on. Like whether it's a smoothie that you really love or an Asiai bowl or a restaurant or a coffee shop that you love to go to, like putting a spin on it to say, okay, I'm having all these lustful desires. I'm being aware of that. Now, how can I fill my body in a healthy way that still satisfies that? That's going to be important. So with all of that, some health principles that I can give you to really help aid and aid to make them healthier. And also, again, to come back to almost this place of home. And what I mean by that place of home is like that self-respect, that self-love of not just doing things to kind of control the situation or to rebel against the situation or to dominate a situation, but really coming to a place of understanding your body and being willing to love and respect that, like using your soft side to treat your body the way that it deserves and needs to be treated. So as I mentioned, Enneagram 8s have the most energy of all the Enneagram types, which is going to be really valuable for you, but also unspent energy can become a really toxic thing. Having bound up energy creates more tension in your body, so you really have to figure out ways to release that excess tension. And often for 8, that looks like spending energy which this is going to sound really backwards, but I really believe that exercise for an eight can actually be a form of stillness. It can actually be a relaxation property or principle because in that expender of energy, you're actually bringing your body back to a normal energy level because you're just kind of riding this really high wave, which sounds great, but you can't sustain that. Like our bodies can't sustain that and it can become, excess energy can become toxic. And so you really have to bring yourself back down. And that's why I really believe that exercise with the right mindset can be a really restful activity for an eight. It can help rid yourself of excess tension. So I want you to figure out ways that you can be active daily, like to get rid of that excess energy, whether it's daily exercise. And eights tend to like intense exercise, strength training, getting stronger, um, running. Those all tend to be great activities for an eight. On top of that, there are other ways that you could get rid of energy and really honor what things that you enjoy doing, and that's being adventurous, maybe going on a hike, try rock climbing, getting this adrenaline rush or like using up energy with an adrenaline rush is really important for an eight's body. So I would vary it up, but make sure that you have some sort of energy expenditure happening in any given day. Now, a tendency of AIDS is that they overwork themselves and sometimes can trap themselves in their work so long, which often tends to be sedentary work. We see a lot of AIDS as designers or politicians, um, people that are just sitting a lot of the time. And so while you're overworking, you're not really thinking about the exercise component, but you are building as the day progresses an unnecessary tension inside your body that could be released from a midday jog over your lunch hour or winding down at the end of the day with a hike, doing something to release energy. That's really, really important. Another aspect of getting an eight healthy is this idea of moving more towards a two. And in moving towards a two, that means you become very generous, very giving. 
Now, what we love about AIDS is that you stand up for the weaker party. Like you are the voice of the weaker party and you will express a lot of energy to help other people. But sometimes that's done without knowing or without physically experiencing the giving aspect. So it's going to be important for AIDS to be relational, to come back to this place of of seeing people and looking at the little ways in which you can help them. Whether it's a simple note to one of the friends that you like, just telling them what you appreciated about them, holding the door for a stranger, cleaning the house just to help out the family. Like there are lots of ways that you can give back, um, even maybe starting a dinner club. Like there's something about being hospitable and making yourself uh, experience this warmth that you have deep inside of you that will actually help you to be more warm and balanced overall. So really that's the idea behind giving back is that it will twist you or turn you or pivot you into becoming a little bit warmer of the human being, which helps you to be more vulnerable with yourself and more loving in general. So give to someone else. The next thing that I can give you is that while you need to expend energy, you also need to create space for rest. Set boundaries. Boundaries on your work life, boundaries on whatever you tend to overdo. Create boundaries and implement rest into your daily life. I mean, if there's nothing worse for an eight, it's probably rest. (laughs) So whether it's sleeping in occasionally, like letting yourself sleep in occasionally, or whether it's just spending time alone with a journal, sitting and reading a good book, all of these things seem like you don't have the time in the day to do them. But I promise, again, this is balancing out that energy level, pulling yourself back into a healthier place. So it really is critical in every Enneagram type, but especially for AIDS, to find that sense of rest, to slow down and to create boundaries on work and rest life, and really to get out and live life. This is important, and sometimes it's important to place people in your life to help you get out and live life. So make sure you create rest by journaling, reading a good book, sleeping in occasionally, creating time by yourself as an escape. There's also this idea of like creating a self retreat, whether it's one day a month or a day a quarter or a few days a year where you really just do nothing but self care for yourself. You don't meet with people, you don't work, uh, you really just rest your body and do things that you enjoy. So that can be a really great idea too. Like I said, that can be really filling for you rather than just this constant chase of fixing everything. And the last one that I want to talk about is your self-awareness. Now, AIDS are very keen on their own self-awareness. Like you know what you're feeling, what you're thinking, what you're passionate about, and you're not afraid to express that. Now, sometimes you can overlook that or you can kind of, I don't want to say ignore that, but you can put so much energy into specific things, again, the all or nothing, that you miss out in important aspects of your life. So for a while, I think it's going to be necessary and important that you use your strong sense of self-awareness, again, to go back and look at your body. This isn't necessarily going to be an easy task for an eight or something that you feel like is a valuable use of your time. But it is important in the overall aspect of keeping control on your life. Because the only way we can keep control in our life is to keep our body well, right? And so in order to do that, you have to have that awareness. So like I said, awareness can come in a lot of different forms. But where I want you to start is through creating a vision of what does health look like for you. So Think about what your body is telling you, what what it needs. And this isn't just going to happen, right? Like you're not going to just sit down and figure this out, but you're going to have to sit down multiple times, maybe every day after every meal and understand, okay, did that settle with me? Was that good for me? How do I feel? Where am I building up tension? How can I let that go? So starting to learn what is good for your body and what fills you up and doing more of that. And inside of that, you can also create your own food rules. Like you do like rules. It's not that you're opposed to that or rebellious of that, but you want to be the one to create and set them. You do like order and you are creative. So I think you can use all of that information to create like your own health plan that is actually going to be a hundred times more influential than anything anyone else could provide. Again, all with the basic stuff, like that's what I find in everything. I'm recommending the same things over and over. But the difference between 
if it works and if it doesn't, is specifically related to how the individual portrays that or perceives that and what they do with it. And this is where you can get the winning hand at health is how you perceive your own health and create food rules based on that. What works for you and what will you stick with? Now, the thing about AIDS, like I said, is that you have a strong sense of willpower. So once you set those rules, you're more than likely going to do that. And that's the importance or the benefit of these healthy rhythms is that you can implement these into your life. Like once you've established some food rules, now I'm not saying change your entire diet and your entire life, that's not gonna work. But be realistic with it. What's one or two things that you feel like your body is asking for or areas where you could reduce some tension and implement that into your daily routine, creating boundaries through setting healthy life rhythms. What I mean by that is, is blocks of things that you do throughout the day that will develop into unconscious behavior that you don't have to think about, like brushing your teeth and what time you go to bed. Like you are very disciplined people. We just have to add the right disciplinary action in to see the results that we want to see. So I think you can do that by creating your own food rules. But like I said, the only way you can create your own food rules is to understand where is my body right now in health and what is it asking for? Make a list, pick one or two things that you want to implement and add that into your life. I give you all kinds of specific things in the handouts. Like I said, like foam rolling, doing daily exercise, preferably intense exercise, going on a self retreat. There are a lot of things that maybe could help your body out, but it has to come from you and what that specifically looks like. So all of that to say, it really is going to be extremely important for a eight to Not look at health as rules set upon you, but to look at health as a means to controlling your life, a means to controlling how much energy you have, how your brain processes processes things, and ultimately how you can be a better champion for other people. And really, it's remembering that there is no one perfect way to eat. The only ideal way is the way that is right for you, and you are in charge of that. Only you can make the rules for that. And that is what I want to challenge you to do because don't AIDS love a good challenge? Like I want to challenge you to break down all the beliefs that you have about food. And I want to challenge you to dig into what is it that your body needs and make those your new beliefs. Okay, AIDS, that's my my challenge to you. That's what I encourage you to do and to take action on. Now, like I said, this can be overwhelming. It can be a lot. But that's why I've created a free handout for you over in the show notes at simperitswellness.com backslash 195 to get that handout. In there, I talk more about the Enneagram 8, what your strengths are, self-care practices. You can implement all the journaling prompts and really creating that health plan that's going to work for you. So make sure that you head over there, grab that, and stay encouraged using your basic desire as your key motivation to get healthy, and that's to determine your own course in life. I mean, in health, you really are in command of your lustful urges, and you just don't want to be controlled or boxed into a set of rules. So the key is that you feel in control of the diet and do your best by practicing gratification delay, maintaining choice freedom, and exercising portion control. And really aids, I want you to come to a place where you are strong enough, confident enough to stay soft and respectful and loving towards yourself and the world around you. That is the bottom line and how to get an eight healthy. Okay, so make sure you head on over to the show notes. Again, that's simperitswellness.com backslash 195 to grab that free handout. Also, if you don't know if you're a type A Enneagram, head on over to episode number 180 or check out the show notes where I give you where I would take the Enneagram test to learn more. Now, there's all kinds of helpful information on the internet about your Enneagram, plus some great books like The Road Back to You, which I'll link up in the show notes. But start to learn about it because it really is influential in helping you to get healthy because health is individualized for all of us. And that really is the mission of the Enneagram Health series It's to make self-care not just what you do, but who you are. And we have to know who we are to make that happen. So keep listening, stay tuned. There's only one Enneagram type left. But before we move on to Enneagram type nine, 
Later this week, I will be interviewing a special Enneagram type eight, asking her what her health struggles have been and what she has found to work in her own life. So stay tuned as we dive in with a real Enneagram type eight as I ask her all the questions and uncover what does health look like for her. So stay tuned for that. As always, don't forget, if you're loving Simper It's Radio, I would love if you would share this with your friends and family, take a quick screenshot, drop it on social media, send it in an email, and let them know about this tribe of people, about you and me, who are on a mission to end health the way that we know it as a series of standards and rules and really champion for something new. And that is making health who we are, individualized, specific, and yet giving you the freedom to live your purpose. That is what I want more than anything. And I hope that we can start to uncover that right here at Simple Arts Radio. So drop those screenshots. And if you have a few moments, I would love for you to leave a rating and review by heading on over to simpleartswellness.com backslash review or finding me at Simple Arts Radio on iTunes. Just drop your rating and review, leave a comment, let me know what you're loving about the show. And again, tell other people about it. It means the world to me and I can't thank you enough. Okay, that's it for today. Don't forget, come back here later this week for that live interview with a real Enneagram Type 8. See you then.